you know, what, what does it take to, to make a, a guy at least start looking at it, you know? You know, you can't talk anybody into doing anything that they don't want to do. That's why organic farming is kind of unique, because not everybody's going to do it, and everybody can't do it. When we go organic, we've got to make our plans based on how it will impact our operation next year, five years from now, 25 years from now, and uh, therefore we have to think a little different. You know, when you come out of conventional, you're, you're driven to that got to be clean, got to gotta spend the most, got to have every pound of nitrogen, got to have the NP and K. In organic, not so much so. Uh, you have to work to develop a strategy, a plan, so that next year your weeds won't be as hot and eager to grow, and the year after that they're better, and the year after that they're better, as well as your fertility builds every year as well. And that for, therefore, you have a bright future. Every year is going to get a little bit better. But if we continue to deplete our soils, continue to aggravate the weed pressure, then we don't have a bright future. I, I started very slow. I, in 1998, my story is I put in a 40-acre parcel, and I, I, I joked that I left the sprayer parked in the end because I didn't know if it'd work. I'd, in my whole life, I'd never raised a crop without chemicals. And it's like, wow, it, it actually worked, and it actually worked pretty well. And, and then we, we kept transitioning ground. We probably transitioned ground over 10 years uh, process. We took on a little more acres and, and things like that. And, and I, I don't have regrets about that because it's a learning curve. During the transition, the first thing I'm going to do once I start getting curious about making a transition to organic is I'm going to develop myself, my knowledge. I'm going to learn all I can learn about it. I'm going to get obsessed with every book I can read, with every article I can read. I'm just going to soak it up and, uh, it, and eventually I'll start developing my own ad identity as to what the vision I have of what my operation is going to look like. And then I have to develop a plan. I'm going to determine my field plan first, where I'm going to put the crops, and then I've got to run it through a business plan model to see if the field plan allows the business plan to make the numbers work because the most important organism is that farmer. If he goes out of business, nobody's going to be around to farm that few more acres organically and we've, we need the organic farmer. So he's got to understand he's got to be able to farm another year. You know, here's this three years looking at you of not making, you know, thinking you can't make a profit. You know, so thinking you can't make a profit and put it on paper and see where all the factors lie for, you know, your your income and expense lines, you'll find that you should be able to cash flow just about anything transitionally. Because if you can't make money on it through your transition, you're not gonna make money on it conventionally. Because it just that's that's just how the numbers are working today. So the first plan I'm going to do is I'm going to walk the fields of the farm that I'm, that I'm going to transition. I'm going to try to learn as much about that soil as I can. I'm going to dig holes and count earthworms. I'm going to try to get the past history on that farm. How many years back did it have livestock? What's the overall condition of the soil? I'm going to look at the old soil test. That's not going to tell me a whole lot, but it gives me some indication as to how well the previous tenant uh, or land management firm that took care of that did as far as keeping the fertility up because I've got to live off conventional type tillage or conventional type fertility practices until I can get that soil's biological processes and live through biological proliferation and nitrogen fixation. And I've got to make that happen as quickly as possible because those years that you're living off past fertilizer applications to the years that you start living off of new fertility built through biological proliferation and nitrogen fixation, those are the years that's a chasm that you've, you've got to get across in almost one giant leap rather than a bunch of little tall, small steps. But that's also the beauty of it because once all those things really do start working and it's not necessarily driven by the National Organic Program, 36 months, the certification that isn't the ding, bell rings, and it's, it's, it's a fully functioning organic system. You know, I've seen fields that I farm that we transition to organic takes seven years or more, you know. But when that really starts happening and everything starts working, it's no different than when the tractor's running on all of its cylinders, you know, it's a beautiful thing. 
you need to look at your past yields and conventional you know can we match those you know that to me that's how I wanted to farm I wanted to match my yields conventionally farming organically and I've become come pretty close most of the time I can get some bad weather and knock me out of the knock me out of the picture once in a while but I've always been super good on yields I think the thing about transition that people need to pay attention to is that you have to be painfully painfully meticulous in my opinion my thinking my thought process meticulous my plan meticulous but you always have to learn that plans are in sand the goal in three years I want a certified organic farm that's production that comes out of the starting gate with 150 bushel acre corn Okay. My plan may change because weather, time restraints, that's okay as long as you keep focused on your goal, where you ultimately want to get. You know, having experience in transitioning um, farmland myself and helping farmers transition farmland, um, you know, not every field is going to be ready for an organic row crop, for instance. So sometimes your rotation can be enhanced in those early transition years, you know, by growing a smother crop, you know, like, uh, you know, peas or, you know, peas in a small grain for forage, um, getting the soil building benefits, getting some revenue generated from that crop, uh, but understanding that the soils on that particular field or on that particular farm might not be ready for a row crop and be opened up. You know, you need to sit down with somebody that really knows what they're talking about. You know, you need to find somebody with the most experience or talk to somebody with a lot of experience on, you know, what worked for them. You know, find somebody as close to you as possible so that, that you are regionalized with your problems. And I have to always keep developing that why. Why am I doing this? Because if that why is not big enough, you come up with a, with a hard enough how, then it will deter you and you'll get sidetracked. You know, there's no, there's no one-fits-all shoe for the organic farmer. Yeah, everybody's farm's different, everybody's land's different. Everybody's got to learn to do what works for them to make it work organically.